This is an example of a goodness of fit test for a proportionate distribution. In this case, the planners adjust their expectations. And, it, and, it, and this time, they would like to test if the central bridges each attract 22% of the traffic, while the outer bridges only attract 14%. Now we are going to conduct a goodness of fit test to see if this hypothesis is true. So in this case, the null hypothesis is that the, the observed traffic matches a distribution where the tr where 22 percent uh, of of counts are on each inner city bridge and 14 percent on outer bridges. And the alternative in this case is that that statement is not true, essentially. OK? So that's always step one, null and alternative. Step two is uh, recognize that this is a, G a goodness of fit test. It's a chi-square test, and we still have five degrees of freedom. Step three, we still want to be 95% sure, so we'll just set alpha to 5%. Step four, well, we um, have the same picture as before. Nothing's really changed. So we have a critical value over here of 11. This is chi-squared. And step five is to now calculate our statistic. So let's use the table again. In this case, these are the OIs. We're going to have, instead of having um, 600 over 6 for each expected for each expected value, we're going to uh, use the percentages that, that were stated in the null hypothesis. So in this case, the expected value, say, for the two inner city bridges, so let's say for inner city equals, well, we said they were going to get 22% of 600. which is 132. And the expected value of the outer bridges is 14% times 600 total cars, which is 84 cars. So these two, we expect to see 132 counts. And these ones down here, we expect to see 84 counts. So now we have to look at our uh, statistic, OI minus EI. Here we have 8, 12, 4, 6, 9, and 11 squared. That is going to be 64. 144, 16, 36, 81, and 121. And now we have to do OI minus EI all squared over EI. So we have to take this column and divide it by that column. And that is 0 0.48, 0 1.09, 0 0.19, 0 0.43, 0 0.96, and 1.44. In order to compute our total, our chi-squared, we're going to sum over all of these values, which gives us a sum of 4.6. If we go back to our chi-squared plot, a value of 4.6 is in this zone in the zone of acceptance. And therefore, step six is going to be accept the null. I just want to take a moment and show you how we would make a decision about step six without having to find the critical value, just by using the p-value approach. 
let's go to our table over here. We have five degrees of freedom and our test statistic is 4.6. So what we need to do is find the p-value of 4.6 when we have five degrees of freedom. So we go down to 4.6. Now, if we had, say, two degrees of freedom, that would be a p-value of 10%, and therefore we would reject. With three degrees of freedom, it's a p-value of 20%, and therefore we reject. Now, the table actually doesn't have the p-value for four degrees of freedom or five degrees of freedom. So how do we know what the p-value is in our case where the, where the test statistic is 4.6 and the degrees of freedom is five? What we have to do is look at this footnote. What this footnote says is all missing entries on this page give p-values above 0.2. And therefore, since this p-value over here is missing, we can assume that the area to the right of our test statistic is greater than 20%. And therefore, the p is not low. And therefore, the null does not go. So in other words, we can accept the null hypothesis.